Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Um, Danielle wanted me to say she really hopes that one of us can get to Double Dragon. That was her only thing, is she really wanted us to watch Double Dragon because she thinks it's a cin- cinematic masterpiece. That was her big her big thing. She wanted us to watch that movie. I feel like Danielle said none of this. I, I do have a list that has one of her favorite films on it, and if we don't pick it, she's going to be mad. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's Double Dragon, isn't it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to the Fire Pick. I'm Tom, British name Thompson, and it's that time again. A new journey will be mapped out and plotted in full detail tonight. Episode 77, Selection Section 11 is underway. I do love the symmetry of that, 77 and 11. It's perfect. So Totally unplanned. It was totally planned. We knew what we were doing the whole time. We're geniuses. We don't think that far in ahead. <laughs> so where to now that we're back from our vacation determination? Hmm. Well, you're going to find out. With us in a moment. Well, you're going to find out in a moment. We already know. We we know where we're going. But before we lay out our next path and reveal our next destination, we should do a brief recap of the rules. So without delay, I'll send things over to Josh. Thank you, Tom. Reginald here. American name Josh. And, uh, well, if you're new here, welcome to the Fire Pit Podcast. But if you're a loyal, longtime listener, welcome back. But just to recap uh, about what we're all about is we're obviously a movie podcast on our, you know, graphic that you click when you pick our podcasts. I thought we were like an arson podcast. One of those how not to make a campfire. Yes. Yes, oh. that's that's true, too. But <laughs> we're a movie review podcast. and We like to discuss the movie and we have some fun skits and whatnot. But we do have a system going all the way back to... Uh, Starship Troopers, we started picking a movie, a destination film, and we try to get to that movie over the course of six episodes. So then we spend six episodes working towards our destination film by linking an actor or an actress from each film, one to the other. For example, we wrapped up Terminator 2 Judgment Day, um, and then we'll be taking somebody from that film into the first film of this next journey. We do have a few rules. We can't use the same actor or actress twice in the same journey. Though said actor can appear in more than one movie in a journey. Um, And we can't use the same actor we use to get out of our destination film. For example, we use Jeanette Goldstein to get into Terminator 2. So she's off the table and we can't use her at any point during this next journey. Yeah, that way we don't do like a movie where it's a Jeanette Goldstein and then uh, Bill Pullman and then Jeanette Goldstein and then Bill Pullman. That way it keeps it varied. Yeah. And uh, watching the same movie more than once isn't forbidden but we have a soft rule that movies that we have seen in the past year are off the table but um pretty much as long as we've seen it over a year ago technically it's allowed Mm -hmm. but like the game six degrees of kevin bacon we link all of our movies together via an actor or an actress and we can follow each one of our movies all 76 of them back to our prototype episode of showdown in little tokyo technically episode zero now finally i'm done talking Thank God. I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to Dan. Dan is going to reveal which movie we're going to next. Nigel? Where are we going? I'm just kidding. Thank you, Josh. Amazing explanation of this amazing podcast. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another Selection Section episode. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. And as was said, last week we wrapped up Journey 4 of Season 2. Holy crap. Uh, We've come a long way. Very long way. Uh, We've been knocked down, roughed up, but we just keep coming back. You could say we've gone the distance. So it's time to ring the bell because the fire pit's gonna fly now with Rocky, the 1976 boxing drama film that made a star out of its writer and lead actor, one Sylvester Stallone. Fitting that we go from one action movie icon of the 80s and Arnold in Terminator 2 to Stallone in Rocky. Now we know the destination 
So now we just need to figure out the journey. And if you're new, uh, the way we do it is the three of us present three lists apiece, three journeys to our destination. We go round robin style. I quote unquote won last time. So I will go last. I'll present my list last. But then after we've presented our three lists, totally nine, we each kind of eliminate our own list that we're just not that strong with. And then the second round is each of us tells the other which one list we'd like to eliminate. And then we consensusly eliminate another one till we're only down to three. And then we eliminate a final one. And then we're down to two. And then we fight until we pick <laughs> the last one. Yep, feelings are hurt. We don't talk to each other for about a week. Yeah, and um, swear words are uttered. Yeah, um, we literally curses are said. Yeah, our friends take sides. It, it just gets really weird. Like I said, I won the last two, so um, no one's won three in a row before tonight. Someone <laughs> asked me, "Will you win tonight?" And I said, "Probably not," because I made them watch Art of War. Uh, that being said, let's get things underway. Oh, and another soft rule we have is each of our lists, we need to present at least one or two films that we haven't seen personally. If the other two have seen it, that's fine. But if you haven't, we, we need to we try to keep a list on one or two movies that we haven't seen personally. So it's not always the same movies that we've all seen a thousand times. That being said, let's get on with the show. We are going to start presenting our lists, and we are going to start this presentation with Josh. Yay. All right. So... I am uh, pumped because I think I've got the winning list. Not maybe not this one, but I've got one of them. I've got uh, I, I even got some audibles all up and prepped. So only three though, Josh. Only I know. three. Shut up. Shut up. We're not. Wait, gonna you guys do... went on like a twenty-minute tangent last selection section about audibles for one of my lists. Remember? And then we, we realized were... that we couldn't use it because we I already uh, linked that uh, actor. Yes. In, in our defense, we thought we could get Commando. And we knew you wanted to go commando. It's okay. All right. So we did. <laughs> we did. Yeah. So my first list, I call this one the hero we deserved. Uh oh. Deserved past tense. Okay. So we uh, take Xander Berkeley from Terminator 2 to the 1990 film The Grifters. Grifters. I've heard of that film. Go on. Sorry. I, uh, it's a John Cusack movie. Oh, yeah. Josh, you see what you're doing there. <laughs> Carry on. So from the Grifters, we follow Stephen Tobolowski. Bing. To 1992 film Hero, starring Dustin Hoffman. That's the one. Yeah, it, I've seen this one. It also has, uh, was it uh, Anthony Garcia? Is that his name? Yes, yes. And Gina Davis. I've seen the cover for this one, for the VHS, but I've not seen yep. the film. It's interesting because uh, Dustin Hoffman... Plays a guy who just really doesn't want to uh, be a hero, but somebody takes credit for something that he did, and then he's like getting pissed, especially when he starts getting like all this renown. But anywho, from Hero, we take Dustin Hoffman to the 1991 film Hook that he did the year before. So from Hook, we take Dante Bosco, aka Rufio, and this is going to be the one you guys are going to like, to the 1995 film Fist of the North Star. A movie I didn't realize was made into live action. That movie is so bad. <laughs> I've never seen it, and it looked it looked not good. <laughs> it's I I have seen it. It's very much not good. Uh oh oh okay. yeah okay. Go on, Josh. So from Fist of the North Star, we follow Clint Howard to the 1982 film Night Shift, starring uh, Batman himself and. Jesus Christ, I, his name's blanking on me. I don't have this in front of you. <laughs> no, I don't have the actor's name. Oh. I, have my I know who you're talking about, though, because I've seen this pop up every so often in like my trying to. You know. Yeah, but it's got um, it's basically where Jesus Christ, the founder, Michael Keaton, starring Michael Keaton. And I uh, forget who the other person is. I'm looking at it. Henry Winkler is. There the it other is. Yeah. yeah. Where uh, Henry Winkler is a mortician and uh, Michael Keaton starts a brothel in said uh, funeral home or whatever. But uh, from Night Shift, we follow Joe Spinell to Rocky. Okay, Josh, you warned me that you um, had at least made one list that pointed to me. and That wasn't it. Oh, this isn't it. That okay. That wasn't it. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I, I, what Tom's talking about is we have discussed our list, but not like what was on them, but I just merely told him that it's like, I have three lists. I have a list that's kind of like a list for me, a list for Dan, and a list for Tom. 
And that's like, that's the way the movies are picked. So this, I would consider my list because it's got the most recognizable films on it. I've only seen Hook, Hero, and Rocky on this list. Okay. Well, destinations really don't count that much yeah. in the final. But well, sometimes okay. we count them. Like I didn't count uh, 42 on, or I counted 42 on some of my lists, but. Okay. Uh, well, Nigel, what are you thinking about this list so far? I really don't want to watch Fist of the North Star again. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the movie, the rest of the movies are are pretty good. I haven't seen all of them, but um, God, Night Shift. I want to say I've seen the TV version of that film, like uh, back in the early two thousands or the late nineties when um, TNT had Monster Vision with Joe Bob Briggs or whatever. I think I've seen the like the edited TV version of Night Shift. I think, but my God, that was that was back in high school, so I don't remember that far back. But uh, yeah, solid list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if trends are anything, Josh's first list is always his weakest one. And again, dude, the Grifters I've always wanted to see. Same with Hero, and. I know the infamy, well, I know the fame of the anime Fist of the North Star. I've never seen Yeah, I watched a handful of episodes of the anime growing up, but I didn't even realize that they made a live action movie, let alone in the 90s. They probably shouldn't. Have. Probably. I watched the trailer for it, and it didn't look very good, but I'm like, this is kind of a what's in the box film for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to put this one on there just because it's going to be one of those bad movies that we're going to love slash hate. Okay, like I'm I'm sitting here saying I really don't want to watch that movie again. Please don't make me watch that movie again. But at the same time, I mean, the audience does like to listen to us suffer. They're they really do. they're really 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 digging the uh Art of War episodes. <laughs> they they are. They are. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they don't have to watch them with us. Yeah. But I mean, I'm curious though. I am pretty curious but okay but we'll talk more yeah well obviously we're gonna have more discussions on it but uh tom how about your first list all right um so i've got a couple decent ones here um i'm gonna start of course with my weakest one i'm tentatively calling this one you gotta fight Uh, all of these films involve fighting we start off with Robert Patrick into Double Dragon. Nice. Danielle's going to love you. She cannot wait to watch that movie. I'm just She's God, begging God damn it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming already Dan- sold. I know. Pencils down, gentlemen. We don't need to hear the rest of it. <laughs> okay, so clearly I've already won, but um, just in case there's anything else here that makes you change your mind... We then take Mark DeCosco, and uh, I'm probably sure I mispronounced yeah, that name. Yeah, it's DeCoscos. DeCoscos into Only the Strong. Oh, is that the one about, uh, not Capybara, that's a rodent. Capybara. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that Only the Strong? Is that the one where he's the... Uh, teacher and he teaches them like capoeira or whatever it is the dancing martial art yes yes master of brazil yeah capoeira oh oh, yeah where he he teaches him cappuccino it's about a barista different movie dan i although i would watch that movie that is right up my alley um i think dave batista's a decent actor i mean (laughs) he's he's decent for what he does dave batista go ahead go ahead tom from uh, Only the Strong, we take Jeffrey Lewis into Double Impact. Ooh. Nice. That's You're a good hard. old guy. That's a gotcha film. Tom's learning. Tom's learning. Like Skynet. Uh-oh. There, you, you guys are liking this list more than I thought you would. Uh, okay, maybe I'll change your mind with this next one. Uh, from there, we take Bolo Young to Bloodsport. I love that movie. <laughs> I like Bloodsport. Ooh, I love this list so far. Oh, I love oh no. I'm Damn saying it. this. No, I'm saying this unironically. I'm literally just, just close to saying pencils down this episode's over (laughs) now i'm really afraid oh um and then we take sean claude van damme into expendables 2 yes i haven't seen this no (laughs) they're not supposed to be liking this list also that's three van damme movies in a row that's awesome oh my god i can stop i can only get so erect (laughs) <laughs> and then we take Sylvester Stallone to Rocky. All right. You yeah, know what? I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you there, Dan. That's pencils I'm, down. Yeah, man. I'm actually, yeah. I'm right now, I'm currently deleting my document for my list. Yeah, I don't even, I, I I don't don't even want to present yep, them now. 
Oh, uh, Tom, I'm not lying though. They're all fighting films. They're they, like it fits a theme. It's so great when our lists fit a theme. Okay, so of these films, I've only seen Rocky. I oh wait, have I seen Bloodsport? I think I've seen Bloodsport. Okay, I might have seen Bloodsport. That's the one where um, John Claude Van Damme gets drunk in a bar and beats up people as part That's of the That's the quest. Bloodsport was the original 80s one where his uh, he's in the Marines or something, and then like his master is killed by somebody, and he goes to fight in the Kumite. Yeah, uh, and cool. Bloodsport served as the inspiration for Mortal Kombat. Which is uh, what kind of made me double-check this. And yeah, I feel dirty. This list makes me feel dirty, but... It makes me feel erect. I know it does, and that makes me feel very uncomfortable. But Double Dragon, so bad, but I need to see how bad it is for real. Most of these feel only the strong I've ever heard of. Double Impact, I've seen four minutes of, but I'm not counting as a movie I've seen because... I stopped very quickly in those four minutes and I forgot everything about those four minutes. I remember Kid Dan loved Double Impact, but I'm pretty sure Adult Dan's going to hate it. Oh, I'm pretty sure we will. Oh, dude, I know Kid Josh loved Double Dragon. I watched the shit out of that movie multiple times. I wanted to go out and buy the toys, but my parents never bought them for me and you couldn't get them in Kansas. (laughs) Not a big Kansas market for Double Dragon. No, not really. Ugh. But um, I don't want to go too much into these. So Can you post me, that, uh, paste that into the uh, the show yeah. notes? I need to, uh, I need to put my mic on mute for a second. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but um, Dan, you're up now. I got nothing. I got nothing, dude. I'm done with this episode already. We're we're going with that list. <laughs> I don't want to, though. (laughs) Oh, my God. Dude, I'm sorry, Tom, but it's actually a good list. Like, it's not full of good movies, but that's a good list. Like, that's a really good list. Danielle will love it. Yeah, Danielle will love it. You know she wants us to see Double Dragon. She's been begging for it since way back in season one. Yeah. You should have heard her this weekend. She was like, you've got to see that. We went on this whole thing where I was talking about this really uh, awesome movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf. And then she just went on this whole tangent about Double Dragon. It's like, okay, Danielle, we get it. You want to watch Double Dragon? Anywho. Anywho. Nigel, you're next. All right. So my first list is called Out of Your Element. Uh, All of these movies involve the character in the film being completely out of their element. Okay. Okay. So... The first movie is we take Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator 2 to True Lies. Nice. Okay. Nice. Okay. And uh, the character in the movie that's out of their element is Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm-hmm. From True Lies, we take Art Malik to James Bond's The Living Daylights. Okay. I don't think I've seen Not that one. Not familiar with that one. Yeah, which it's, one? Uh, one of the tim- it's one of the two Timothy Dalton James Bond movies. It's uh, one of the... Oh, The Bad Guy and Rocketeer. Gotcha. Ah, funny you should mention that. We take Timothy Dalton from The Living Daylights to The Rocketeer. I love that oh, God film. Damn it. <laughs> I have to love this list already. <laughs> from The Rocketeer, we take John Polito to The Hudsucker Proxy. I've never seen all of that film. Interesting choice. From The Hudsucker Proxy, we take Bill Cobbs to Demolition Man. <laughs> and nice. And from Demolition Man, we obviously take Sylvester Stallone to Rocky. That's a good list. That's a good list. I just want to point out that uh, you guys realize how hard it's going to be getting out of Rocky. (laughs) Not Uh, using Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, not not true. We could just take Talia Shire to Rocky 3 or (laughs) 4 or 2. Like she doesn't die until Rocky Balboa, so we could just use one of the Rocky sequels I, to get out yeah, of Rocky. I guess technically, yeah. Well, yeah, you would need to. Or you yeah. could take uh, well, Bur- no, no. Burgess it's Meredith just... had a pretty good career yeah, too. Yeah, Burgess so we could... Meredith has been in a lot of films. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, but no, that's a good list. Okay, that's, that's a really good list. Not a bad start. Um... Oh, and uh, the movies on that list I have not seen. I have never. I have not seen the Hudsucker Proxy, and. Uh, that's it, actually. So that one, I, I only have one movie I haven't seen. So uh, so technically a disqualifier. That's all right. That's all right. Um, you've got two other lists. Yeah, we're going to pick Tom's list anyway. Yeah, so. I mean, we're going with you got to fight anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> honestly, this is just I, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to get participation points at this point. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's that's fine that makes sense <laughs> all right well round one is over we're going into round two now so josh what is your second list my friend oh my second list now um with this list and my next list i want to point out that uh no offense to the 80s because they are awesome i tried to steer away from the 80s a little bit so we could save uh, or save it up and there's a lot of other good films that came out in other uh decades so with one exception in this one, I have a couple audibles in here, but I think I'm going to go with this particular one. So I call this list all the franchise. So with the exception of one, all of these are franchise movies. Okay. So uh, we take Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator 2 Judgment Day to Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> I actually haven't seen that one in a while. I have never yeah. seen that one. I think I've seen it, but it's been years. I've recently watched the Conan the Destroyer, the sequel, but I haven't seen The Barbarian in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still need to see all of that film, too. But uh, from Conan the Barbarian, we take Max von Sydow to the original The Exorcist. Ooh. The 1973 horror film that redefined horror films. Yeah. I've never seen that one, and I was, I'm anx- I'd be anxious to see it. You've never seen The Exorcist? I've never, I've never seen any of The Exorcists. Like what? I said, on this list, there's only two movies I've seen, with the, not counting Rocky. That's right, because you were at the horror marathon with us, but you had to bail because you were like falling asleep, so you had to take off before you got to the big film, which was Yeah, like, just put, put my shame out there, Tom. Thanks. Thanks. Well, anyway, so we take... <laughs> Carry on. We take Linda Blair from The Exorcist to Airport 1975. Josh, you were getting my Christmas list. <laughs> this is for me. Oh, this isn't your list. This is Dan's list. Okay. Wow. And but and this is the one one of the minor exceptions. This is the sequel to the original Airport. So this isn't the first one. This is the second one. The original was just the was Airport. So this is at Airport 1975 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that came out in 1974. But who else was in uh, Airport? One. Charlton Heston, who was in the original Planet of the Apes. Oh, I didn't think you would go that direction. Okay. I have other direct. I, I have another Audible that I can call going from Airport that ha- does have all of them, but I liked this one because I thought Planet of the Apes would be a good film to get to. What? I haven't seen it in a long time, so oh. I remember loving it as in high school. So I was like, I haven't seen it since high school, but I remember liking it when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. But from uh, Planet of the Apes, we follow Woodrow Parfy to a 1976 film called Stay Hungry, which starred the dude and Arnold Schwarzenegger in his like second or third role before he became a big franchise hit. But it's about Sally Ride, not Sally Ride, that's the astronaut. Sally Field? Sally Field, thank you. Sally Field, um, the dude, his name's failing me right now, and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from uh, Stay Hungry, we follow Joe Spinell to Rocky. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's a solid list, but it's definitely not You Gotta Fight. It's it's not. It's, it's not. It's, it's really it's not. not oh, you I, gotta I fight. think it's better than You Gotta Fight. I'm I don't just, think I'm it's even saying. remotely close to the quality of that list. Actually, if I'm being serious, I do like the list, although I happen to feel that Planet of the Apes is a destination film. But could be, but at the same but time, again, they can only, they can only have so many destination films. So yeah. the, it's a good the, list. The other thing. I, I will tell you, I had another one going from airport to the 1973, the three musketeers and three musketeers to the 74 Chinatown and Chinatown to Rocky. That was another list that I came up with, but I chose to go with this one. This was a solid one. Cause again, as you said, these are all franchise builders or part of a franchise. I mean, we would argue like uh planet of the apes could be a destination. So could Conan and the exorcist, but uh, what, okay, so which of these films have you not seen aside from The Exorcist? Uh, Exorcist, Airport, and Stay Hungry. Yeah, Stay Hungry is definitely a um, what's in the box film. Yeah, Stay Hungry looks like one of those, uh, like, and I dare I make a connection with Nithix, especially Dan when he was talking about prototype um, Stallone. Mm-hmm. We, we're going to get prototype Jeff Daniels and prototype Sh- Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean... When was Stay Hungry made? I'm going 1976. to 1976. Wow, very. I, was he even able to speak English? He was mm. probably still heavily either dubbed or accented, but yeah. 
But yeah, in that list, it's all 70s, four se- 70s film, one 60s movie, and one 80s movie. I have to I have to applaud you, Josh, for going outside of your comfort zone and picking something that was made before 1985. Yeah, yeah. And again, I've, I've got some thoughts about this list um, already, and they're good thoughts. Yeah. They're really good thoughts. You know, I almost don't want to segue to Tom because he can't top that list, but Tom... What's your second list? It's not going to yeah. be as good. But I'm, what although it? I'm going to have to preface this by saying your other two lists are now automatically disqualified because you got to fight is the best one. It's funny, Josh, that you went with a list of franchises because you know what? No, I'm going to save that list for last. But this second list, I'm going to call win to lose. This is where a technically people win. But at the same time, they don't quite win. That's the theme. So we interesting. St- yes. So we start off. We take Castulo Guerra to the usual suspects. Ooh, I, I know. To see that one. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. And from there, we take Benicio del Toro to Way of the Gun, which is an incredibly underrated film never heard of that one not many people have you lost me when you didn't say wolfman i think i saved this list by not (laughs) choosing wolfman um but from way of the gun we take james con into the original rollerball Ooh, yeah you threw that one out last just uh selection section yes we did but james con just can't be you know can't be let down my dudes it's james con from rollerball we take john houseman to the 1970 political thriller Three Days of the Condor. What? <laughs> yeah, that's it stars Robert Redford. Essentially, Robert Redford works for a publishing company as an editor, and uh while he's out for lunch, his entire office is murdered, and he's being hunted by political assassins, and he has to find out what they know that is that's got them all killed. Very good film. Really good. But from uh, Three Days of the Condor, we take Faye Dunaway to The Champ, which was another film I had on a previous uh, list sometimes back. It's Getting uh, greatest flashbacks. Getting greatest flashbacks. No, no. This one stars Ricky Schroeder as a boxer who's trying to prove himself to his son. He's been a bum all his life, but now he's going to he's going to prove himself. And um, I know the ending to that film. And. It's technically a happy ending, but from there we take uh, Bill Baldwin to Rocky. Interesting list. Definitely not as good as you got to fight, though. I I think I'd argue that's uh, slightly better because he's a quality. I think Dan's going to be with me on this one. Yeah, you got to fight is still better. Tom, it's not about the quality of the films. It's about the (laughs) fact that this list is going to be fucking amazing. Besides, I'm already picturing the skits. <laughs> this may be disqualified because I've seen all but two films. I have not seen Rollerball and I have not seen The Champ. I have seen well, remember, the, the, the thing is only you, there's only got to be two films on the list you haven't seen. Oh, good, good, least. good. I wasn't sure if it was three. So of these lists, Three Days of the Condor and Way of the Gun are two films that I love. And I would love to watch with you guys to get your opinion, especially Way of the Gun, because the first five minutes of that film sums up the entire philosophy of that film. And what bothers me most about the film, I remember the previews and it made it off to be this kind of like weird black comedy. Like these two guys try to kidnap this one girl, but it turns out she's connected to the mob. Hilarity ensues and no, oh no. There is nothing funny or whimsical about this film. (laughs) There's a scene near the end where the trailer played off to be funny, and it was not. (laughs) But so, yeah, that's my list number two. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. It is an interesting list. It's not you got to fight. But it's interesting. You know that you say, Tom. Tom, it's either we pick you got to fight, or you go another six journeys without getting a list picked. Well, I haven't uh, given you my third list yet. I don't so. think you need to. I don't even know why Josh and I are still presenting at this point. I don't. I, he, he had me a double dragon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, somewhere Danielle is like probably reading or something, and she's just like, yeah. The second okay. he said, the second he said blood sport, I'm like, yes. And list number two. What okay. do you got? All right, my second list is called One Man Can. 
can what? Either make a difference or impact the outcome of the story. One man may. Yes, I think Josh is right. The proper grammar is one man may. Actually. Whatever. From Terminator 2, take Schwarzenegger to one that we desperately wanted to do last journey, Commando. Thank you, Nigel. All right. From Commando, we take David Patrick Kelly to The Crow. From The Crow, and this is for you, Josh, we take Michael Wincott to The Count of Monte Cristo. Ooh. Ooh. that film. From The Count of Monte Cristo, we take Guy Pierce to Ravenous. Do not know that one. It's a movie, it's a movie about a, uh, like it takes place in the old, well, I'll tell you guys when I'm done. Okay, anyways, Ravenous. From Ravenous, we take John Spencer to Copland. Wait, I know Copland. Why do I know yeah, Copland? It's the Stallone movie where he gained like 40 pounds. Yeah, he plays basically like a like an overweight sheriff guy in a small town in New Jersey. Okay, yeah. yeah a, bunch of, a bunch of corrupt New York cops live there or something like that. Anyways, um, and from Copland, we obviously take Stallone to Rocky. Okay, solid. Interesting, interesting list. But uh, not bad for a second list, Nigel. Not oh, bad and uh, I have, out of this list, I have not seen Ravenous, I have not seen Copland, and uh, that's it. Yeah, those are the two movies I haven't seen. Either. Okay, That's definitely a list I would present. I haven't seen The Crow or the other, those two. The Crow? I feel like that would be a list, like, three movies that I have seen that I really wanted to watch. That definitely feels like a me list. Yeah. Uh, the Rav- Ravenous is a movie about, a, like, an army guy out west gets transferred to, like, a wilderness fort and finds out they're all cannibals or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I think it, like, it comes up with, like, the if, the, if you eat human meat, you eventually get stronger, but then the only but then it's the only thing you can digest, so the whole camp is crazy because they've been eating people for a while. I think. I don't know. I've not seen it. I, I only read a synopsis of it on IMDb when I was looking this up. But that is my list. So, Josh, your third list, sir. Ah, uh, my third list I call The Originals, not after the soggy uh, vampire show. <laughs> Um, and we just lost all our female listeners. Um, <laughs> all two of them. <laughs> we're, we're married to both of them. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. There's Danielle. So, okay. But we lost two of the three. Yes. But the original. So everything in here has a theme. I'm going to start with Terminator 2 Judgment Day. We're going to take Arnold Schwarzenegger to the original movie starring one Jack Slater in Last Action Hero. Ooh. Yep. And then from uh, Last Action Hero, we're going to the original movie about taking on some ghosts. You guys know where I'm going with this one, right? To 1940s Ghost Breakers. What? It's a Bob Hope comedy. Who's in that one? Bob, Bob Hope, Hope and uh, Anthony Quinn. We follow Anthony Quinn to the 1940 film The Ghost Breakers. Wow, Josh. That is a out of nowhere. Whoa. It looks interesting. Um, it's originally based off, I believe, a radio show, but this is before Bob Hope did all of his road movies. So almost prototype Bob Hope. Holy God. Uh, This is my list. This is your list, Tom. Okay. Now, uh, we follow from Ghostbreakers, one Lloyd Corrigan to the Manchurian Candidate. The original one? The original one. Not the Denzel remake that came out in 04. Thank you. But uh, the one with one Frank Sinatra, whom we follow to Ocean's Eleven. I've seen that version. Yes, I've seen the ending to that version. But uh, yeah, that's the Rat Pack in all of their glory in Ocean's Eleven. Mm -hmm. And then we follow Ocean's Eleven to the original Batman, the movie that came out in 1966. Even thinking of this. I was okay. even thinking he was going to do that too. I'm like, wait. <laughs> okay, so who's who's taking us into Batman? We follow Caesar Romero, Joker himself, to Batman the movie, and then we follow Penguin, aka Burgess Meredith, to Rocky. Now, I have an audible for this one. If you don't like Batman, but you can follow Richard Conte to The Godfather and Talia Shire to Rocky. No, I think I I love the the swerve of Batman sixty six right there. That was a clever twist. <laughs> that is a devilishly clever list. Nicely done. You are right, Josh. I have never heard of Ghost Breakers or Breakers. Ghost, ghost Breakers, yeah, the Ghost Breakers. Yeah, not Ghost Chasers, not Ghost 
catchers, not ghost snatchers, ghost breakers. And it almost is the oldest movie we've seen on this podcast. Only only beaten by uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which came out the year before. Wow, man. But uh, I, I have to dedicate this list to my friend Nick, who sold me on the Manchurian Candidate. He was like, you've got to do this one. So I started looking it up, and I'm like, oh, Frank Sinatra's in this one. Oh, okay. And I started reading and looking at it. He sold me on the movie, and I'm like, i got to get to this movie now. So I basically designed this list completely around that movie. And of this, uh, on this one, I've only seen Last Action Hero and Rocky. I actually have not seen any of the other films on this on this list. Oh wow, I've seen I've seen the original Manchurian Candidate. I've seen Ocean's Eleven, Last Action Hero, Batman sixty six, and Rob and Rocky. I never even heard of Ghost Breakers. Yeah, this is a new one for me. I, I've seen Ocean Eleven. You haven't seen Batman sixty six, Josh? I used to watch the series when it was on TV. I don't think I've ever sat down and actually watched the movie. Okay. Maybe bits and pieces That's of the it. One, I, it's the, the famous scene from it's where he's running around with the bomb trying to get rid of the yeah. bomb. Like I, see, I think I've seen clips from it, but I haven't seen the movie all the way through. Oh, my God. So, wow, 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 wow. I almost want you to see this list because of that film. But I've never seen Manchurian. I've never seen Ghostbreakers. Yeah, those two are the only ones I haven't. I love Last Action Hero. I loved it as a kid, for sure. I, Honestly, I've seen it recently like ish i still think that movie fairly well holds up is a pair it's like kind of an almost parody territory but not quite yeah 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 and that's why i appreciated it even back then okay josh mm, this is definitely i smell the cheeseburger i smell the fries i love this already but nicely done i thought you would like that list that's uh that's been that's my favorite list out of my three Help me impressed. All right, so is it my turn next to give? It is now your turn, Thompson. Let's give us your third list. Okay, so this list here, I am tentatively calling Cavalcade of Cinema Classics. Much like your second list, Josh, these are all, well, they're not franchise films, but they are pretty much films that most people would or should have on their to watch list i do have an audible for this list too but i'm going with this one we're going to start with xander berkeley into heat oh not red heat but heat no heat is, is that the sandra bullock no it's a bank heist, it's a bank heist film with robert de niro oh and, heat uh, yeah okay sorry i'm thinking yeah wow why yeah. did my brain go there josh <laughs> you got too many white claws <laughs> what we're losing Josh yeah. already. I need to move this along. So from <laughs> Heat, we take Robert De Niro into The Untouchables. Ooh, I love that film. Never seen it, but I know about it. Good uh, movie. And from um, Untouchables, we take Charles Martin Smith into Starman. Oh, that's another uh, Jeff Daniels movie, isn't it? Yes, it is. 1980s. Nice. I, I think I had it. You on mean the Jeff list. Bridges? Jeff Daniels. Starman? Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Bridges. It's Jeff Bridges. But it's from Starman, we take Jeff Bridges into The Last Picture Show. I love that film. It's a very good film. Not many people have seen. But it has Sybil Shepard, who will take us into Taxi Driver. Interesting. And from Taxi Driver, we take Joe Spinell to Rock. Nice. Yes. Yeah. It's a very I'm interesting list. The, uh... It's not You Gotta Fight. It's a good list. Of these, I have not seen Heat and I have not seen Starman, and I have not seen all of Taxi Driver. I've only made it like 11 minutes in, so... That's the one with Jodie Foster, is like a 14-year-old, right? Yes. A, he is a 14-year-old prostitute. I think I've seen more of that movie than I remember. It's gross. <laughs> it is <laughs> Not because of that. Movie. I was 14 when I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, all these are classic films. I love The Last Picture Show. It's... It's a depressing What's that one about? It's a slightly nostalgia film because it takes place in the 1950s, even though it was made in the 19, late 1970s and early 1980s. It's about a small town, um, dusty old town. Last picture show comes because their movie theater's shutting down. Uh, but it follows these characters, Jeff Bridges, uh, Sybil Shepard, and a few others as they're graduating high school. Um... It's not a happy film. 
It's kind of a downer, but it's a really good film. And it's early Jeff Bridges, too. He passes for high school, but I think he's early 20s. Uh, but yeah, and Starman I've never seen, and that's... That came on one of my lists coming out of Raiders. Yeah, same, same. So, like I said, all these are classics, like your list. Um, with the exception of Taxi Driver, I wouldn't say any of these are really destination classic. Uh, I think the rest are classic enough that they we wouldn't feel like we're missing an opportunity at, with destination. So that's... That's that list right there. I could ramble on and I will ramble on later. So, Nigel, what's your creme de la creme? Ah, well, this one's called Blowing Your Top. <laughs> I love the name. All right. So from Terminator 2, we take Linda Hamilton to Dante's Peak. <laughs> is in that one. Yeah. From Dante's Peak, we take Pierce Brosnan to Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Yeah. Love that movie. Yeah. And you'll like this. You'll you'll love the next film, Tom. From Goldeneye, we take Sean Bean to Ronan. <laughs> I still did I ever give you that movie back, by the way? No, you never gave it back, because I know you loved it. <laughs> From Ronan. Is that the only film he survives? Uh well he doesn't make it to the end though. But he does he, he's not actually killed. Um, from Ronan, we take and then I can actually call an audible here, but from Ronan we take Robert De Niro to Heat. Nice, nice, and nice. Okay, so we take Robert De Niro to Heat, and from Heat we take Al Pacino to The Godfather Part Two. From Godfather Part Two, we take Talia Shire to The Rock, or to Rocky. I'm sorry, not The, the Rock. Rock. <laughs> My bad. No, to Rocky. Not a bad list. I like that one. Good choice again. Dante's Peak, never seen. Heat, never seen. Godfather Two. I love Godfather Two. So- no, Godfather Two is a good movie, but. Uh, you can act, you can technically use Godfather One because I just need Talia Shire and she's in Godfather One too. She's also in Godfather Three, which is awful. But <laughs> but I, I figure Godfather the first one is absolutely a destination film. Like that needs to be a destination film someday. So we'll save that one. Yeah, because I saw that's like one of the highest rated movies on IMDb and one of the like very few people don't like it. Yeah. So it's like I had that on my list instead of batman but i'm just like i think batman is better for it because i think godfather is definitely well your list fit batman fit better on your list and in my list godfather fits better or godfather part two fits better so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i agree on that one again this is a pretty solid list um i can't remember what dante's peak is about it's uh basically it's remember the summer of volcanoes like uh tommy lee jones uh Volcano came out, the one where a volcano magically appeared in the middle of L.A. Uh, I think yeah. that was a Roland Emmerich film. This was the other counterpart that was more the more realistic counterpart that uh, took place in, I don't know, Colorado or something. But it's basically about a, a, a town, unbeknownst, the volcano erupted. And uh, Pierce Brosnan played into his tropes of the super intelligent guy that nobody believes. Of course, of course, of course. But it's a good one. I enjoy it. I'll enjoy it a lot more in Volcano. Yeah. It, far. It's the um it's the deep impact of Volcano's uh Armageddon. But it's entertaining. It's yeah, Dante's Peak's way more entertaining than Deep Impact was cuz that's why Armageddon beat Deep Impact. Like I guess Deep Impact had quote unquote more accurate science, but Armageddon's a more fun film and audiences don't care if as long as they're having fun. Yeah. yeah. Which one has Aerosmith doing your theme <laughs> song? Thank you right. very much. Bruce right. Willis and Ben Affleck. Yeah, but Don, I've actually never seen Dante's Peak. I've never seen Heat or Righteous Kill, whichever one we decide to go with. We should go with Heat, though. Heat's a better We'll film. go with Heat. We just go ahead and pick Heat. Yeah. So I've not seen Dante's Peak and I've not seen Heat. And it's been a dog's year since I've seen Godfather Part 2. I watch The Godfather all the time, but the Godfather part two. I've seen that in a long, long time. I've never seen Godfather. We'll fix that one day, Josh. I promise. Honestly, it's not your strongest list that you've produced so far, but I um, we'll talk about that in a hot second. But not bad. Not bad. You guys should be lucky. I had a list that took us through Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Thankfully, you learned your lesson from The Art of War, and we're all better off. Well, yeah, if you would have picked that one, that would have been a just a ringer. We would have picked that one. Oh, well, then it's Dante's Peak, then Golden Eye, then Ronin, then Mission Impossible, then Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, then Rocky. I'm done. I'm done. I quit. That's, I quit the podcast. That's, that's the list. That's I, the list. I quit. I quit. Three in a row. Dan wins it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Honestly, though, honestly, though, the symmetry of that list, I one of the reasons why I almost presented it because the symmetry of that list, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, is almost universally regarded as Stallone's worst film, other than Oscar. Like it's been, it's a, usually a tie between Stop or My Mom Will Shoot or Oscar, and then Rocky's like considered probably his best. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we've all presented. Uh, we've had nine lists presented now. So yes. now what we're going to do is we're going to basically go through and we're going to cut down a list off each one of ours. Yeah, um, before we do, can uh, we make a quick uh, break? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so real quick break and then I will be right back. Welcome back to another journey selecting episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and birthday boy, Tom. Aw, you got me the thing that I always wanted. How did you know? So thoughtful. And thank you for keeping your thoughts with us here at the fire pit. It's that time again. We must be going to heaven, cause it's selection section 11. Summer is over, now training season begins, and we're training our way to the destination of our soon-to-be next journey, which is this journey, Rocky! The seminal boxing classic that launched the career of one Sylvester Stallone and inspired workout soundtracks for decades to come. But if you want to inspire people to buy your products, or if you want to inspire us with some ideas that you have for the podcast, or if you're just inspired to talk with us about oh, whatever, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line as well as the focus of your email, whether it's to commission an ad, share some art, P.S. Thank you again, Nora. Correct us on a past mistake, or whatever and what have you, and shoot it on over. From there, we'll read it, put it up against eight other emails that we've all written ourselves, whittle it down until there are only three left to consider, and never respond. Turns out we went with another email. Better luck next time. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Ooh! If you'll excuse me, these birthday candles aren't going to blow themselves out. So I'm going to go huff and puff these candles into oblivion and get my face filled with some cake. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. <laughs> oh, someone give me a fire extinguisher. This one's gonna be all day. You ever have someone you know you're like friends with, but you're not really close friends with them, and like you try to remember their name? And it's just like, what the fuck is that dude's name? Yes. Oh, and then yeah. you, so you so you start asking vague questions so that they start to, so that you get them to reveal that their name is. Yes. So how's the family? I'm an orphan. Right, right, right. So what was that one thing your mom told you the other day? Damn it. She's been dead for years. Died in okay, a plane dude. wreck. I lean over to my wife if, or somebody's like, what's his name again? Yeah. <laughs> ben. His name is Ben. He was at her wedding. Oh, what's up, Ben? Dude, my name's Nick. Shit. Yeah, I didn't know his name either, babe. <laughs> but moving on. All right, so now we are going to get into the part where we cut a list off of each of ours. Kind of a double strike rule, I guess. So I guess we'll go ahead and start with mine since I'm at the top of this, uh, since I went first. I'd say out of my three lists, I would cut uh, the hero we deserved. Really? Um, why that list? Because I like my other two lists better. I mean, that's a solid enough reason for me. Yeah, it's like, I like, I like, uh, don't get me wrong, I don't hate the movies. Like, I, I, I don't know what it was, but I kind of had this bug in me when I was creating these lists that I kind of wanted to, uh, 
branch out a little bit. Mm-hmm. I wanted to like get outside of my comfort zone and watch movies that aren't uh, necessarily in my purview. Yeah. So I feel like um, the hero we deserved is more in what I'm used to watching. And I kind of wanted to break out of that a little bit. You know, it's like we've been doing this enough. We've seen a lot of movies that are popular in one regard or follow a certain type of context or theme. Very, you know, guy movies, so to speak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I feel like that my other two lists kind of break that mold a little bit, you know, broadening our horizons and all that. And I feel like the first list doesn't do that as well. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have to agree with you on that one, Josh. It is an interesting list. You've got a few on here that I do want to see. Um, Hero, in particular, just because I always remember seeing the VHS cover in my uh, video store uh, when I was growing up, and a lot, too, in the family video down the hill from me. I don't know why they had that one around, but it always I'd pass it like, I really should see that film sometime and i never did and then family video went out of business <laughs> whoops but, yeah that was one of those movies my parents rented started watching it and i came in sat down and finished the movie with them yeah. um i liked it i thought it was really funny mm-hmm. um i don't think i've seen it all the way through like i've seen it like from like 20 percent on sure i mean it doesn't look like or strike me as a film that would be like wow but I don't think it would be a film that would be, ugh. Yeah, so. it's it's like, I think, uh, what is it, a 6.5? 6.57 is a solid rating for that film. Yeah, yeah, that's inching into watchable. Um, mm. I mean, Grifters, that's a John Cusack film, but depending on when in Cusack's career that came along, it could not be necessarily a good thing. Love the actor, his later stuff, kind of shit. And Fist of the North Star... I do want to see what's in that box. I don't want to see it that badly. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to agree with. I, I honestly feel like most of those movies will probably come back up again. So, but of my list, um, are we doing each other? Wait, we, so I we think what to... we do is we each get kind of a vote. Yeah. In the, which list we'd get rid of. So it's like, I say like I, you lead with your list. So I say I lead with mine. I want to cut the hero. We deserve. If you guys have it, if you guys agree with me, you just say you agree or you give me a reason why you would vote for another one of my lists. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of glad in a meta sense that I, I do tend to forget some aspects of our rules so we can refresh the, the listeners on what's mm-hmm. going on and how this works. I'm totally doing this on purpose. It's not at all because I have the memory of a goldfish. Yes. So, but I have to agree with your assessment that of your list, I'm trying to think if there's uh, another if um, list number three is also kind of weak in my opinion. But of the three lists, yeah, I have to agree that one. Um, I think you're right. Nigel, do you have anything to say before we move on to Tom? I'm disqualifying all three of your lists because I'm going with you. Got to fight. You don't have to. I don't have to do anything. I don't want to do. No, okay. um, honestly, Josh, I I like your first list like a lot, but I don't know if it fits like the theme of going into Rocky, like because Rocky's like a big film. Uh, but I would, you know, and, and also I think a lot of those movies we'll see on lists in the future. Um, mm. Whereas like your other two lists have some older films that uh, might not come up. I don't say they're never going to come up again, but they, it'll be a while before we see them again. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you. The hero we deserve is the one I would cut to. I thought I had another thought, but I didn't. So yeah, Tom. So what about you? What's the, uh, what list of yours would you cut? Gee, which one of my lists am I going to want to cut? Hmm, which one could it be? Hmm. Win to lose? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's the one I'm going with. Honestly, if we're going to start off cutting anything, I love win to lose. I really do. It's such a good list because all of these films end with our heroes. Well, they 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 lose. Um, they, There's... They they survive, and that is a win of itself. Much like Rocky, they all go the distance in some form or another. And I think thematically, that works. And that's why I'm going to cut You Gotta Fight. Because although all of those films are fighting films, like Rocky is, Rocky does deserve a sort of respect. It's not... 
a sacred film, but it does deserve reverence. Some of the past journeys we've where the destinations have been kind of good films, great films. I dare say some classics in their own right, but the movies we pick do fit them a little more. They're more fun. Terminator 2, Judgment Day, a lot of those films we did pick were kind of what some would argue are a little more bro films. Sure, not exactly what you would um, insist people see, but they feel right with that film. They're fun films at the end of the day, or they're blockbuster films, whether they're good blockbusters. Art of War, for example. Art of War was not a good film, but it was meant to be a summer blockbuster like uh, Terminator 2. That it failed, it doesn't change that. So that's why I'm going to cut You Gotta Fight, because all of those films, they don't fit Rocky. And so, yeah, that's why I'm going with that one as the first one I kill. Nigel, your thoughts? Uh, He's wrong. Um, <laughs> you Gotta Fight is an amazing list. Not because the movies are bad, but because the movies are bad. No, honestly, Double Dragon and Double Impact. Well, uh, Expendable. I haven't seen Expendables 2, but it, it can't be any worse than Expendables 1. But, um... Seen it. If you've seen any of the other... Yeah, I know, I know, I know. They're like the Transformers films. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Um, Mm -hmm. They're they're basically Sylvester Stallone's version of those Adam Sandler Netflix films. Like, he just gets his friends together for a payday and make a movie together. But, uh, honestly, Tom, the only one reason why I would cut Win to Lose isn't because I don't like the list. It's because I think Three Days of the Condor is worthy of a destination film. Because I've never seen that film. But I hear nothing but good things about it. It always comes up in like, you know, those best of Robert Redford lists. Like Mm -hmm. these are the Robert Redford movies you have to watch. But yeah, that's the only reason why I would cut when to lose. I actually like you got to fight in Calvacata cinema classics better than that list. Um, Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm going to slightly disagree with you on it being a destination film, but I'll I'll let Josh um, continue his thoughts um, on that because I don't need to go to that for this film. So, well, um, I did kind of mention um, my thoughts earlier on how we do kind of some of those, like when I was talking about my lists on the bro lists and the Mm -hmm. uh, guy films and stuff. And as much as I absolutely love you got to fight, I would have to agree with Tom. Mostly because it's like those are also movies we're probably going to get to at some point. Um, definitely got to hit up Bloodsport. I'm not excited to see Expendables. I loved Only the Strong. I remember enjoying it, but acknowledging that it was not the uh, a great film, but I enjoyed watching it. Mm-hmm. I love uh, Mark De- uh, DeCascos. And, um, and I know Danielle's probably going to cry when we find out we're not doing Double Dragon, but um, I hear the weeping. Yeah, we can we can hear it. Um, it's okay, Danielle. We'll get to it eventually. <laughs> but no, it's like uh, we're, we're going to hit up something Mark Dacascos De- was in because he was in this movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf. It's a French film that I tried to get to, but getting out of that film was kind of hard. That film's actually really good. I remember loving it when I watched it back in like 2004, 2005. But uh, yeah, getting into it's easy. Getting out of it's a little tough. But we'll definitely have to hit those up at some point. But I would have to say... Mostly to t- try to like broaden our horizons in the, in the in the sake of that, I would have to say cutting you got to fight. Dan, don't hate me. It's typical. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's resignation letter. What do you hey, think I've been it. typing oh. the whole time Josh has been talking? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's a, he, no, you've been replacing your um, final list with the one with the stop or my mom will shoot. Yeah. Damn right. it. No. And, uh, yeah, again, it's it would be a fun list if uh, we weren't going to Rocky. But we are going to Rocky. So. I guess you're right. I guess if, if we were going to Rocky Four, that would yeah. be a good list, you know? Ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to table this list yeah. for when we go to Rocky Three or Rocky Four. Yeah, like if we were going to go in season season yeah. four, we'll uh, we'll have a Terminator and then uh, the original Terminator leading into Rocky Four. Yeah, that will be the next. <laughs> yeah, we can do so that. We could use everything here, yeah, with the exception of Robert Patrick. We'll have to figure something out. Yeah. I'm putting that down. It's like, we're saying this. I'm going to make this canon. So, oh, no, okay. we'll make, make Wayne's World a destination. We can use Robert Patrick again. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Wayne's World as destination, then Rocky Four. But either way, you got to fight. That that would be a fun list if we were doing Rocky 
four or even rocky five yeah. instead of rocky but that's i'm now i'm stepping off the podium and giving it to the esteemed senator from the other part of ohio dan uh my list that i would eliminate probably probably one man can as much as i really want to do commando with you guys mm-hmm. Because I think Commando is like amazing. Josh is right. The Count of Monte Cristo. I think we were maybe thinking about that for a destination film. But mm-hmm. um, oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just no. my one I would eliminate actually is out of your element because I've seen all those movies except for the Hudsucker proxy. Oh, yeah. Your first yeah. list. Uh, yeah. uh, I couldn't remember the name of that one. Out of element. Out of your yeah. element. Yeah. Each. Uh, yeah. You know that we put all these in the document right tom i know but for my own so i'm not having to go back and forth between the shared document i like to keep it on my own little spreadsheet thingy to thing so i can just use that but okay okay uh why why so because you've seen you haven't seen hudsucker but you've seen every one of those other films yeah i've seen true lies uh living daylights rocketeer demolition man rocky like i love all those films um mm-hmm. the only one i can't get rid of is rocky or that's the only one I can't avoid, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would eliminate out of your element for that very reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh, your opinions? Um, uh, yeah, uh, honestly, out of that list, I've seen True Lies, Rocketeer, Demolition Man, and Rocky. So I've never seen Living Daylights or Hudsucker Proxy. One Man Can. It's a solid list. Those blow your top. I'd have to agree out of your element. Yeah, and, and just if, so we follow our own rules. I, I mean... The movies are pretty weak anyway, so even if you hadn't seen the majority of them, if you had met the criteria, I'd still agree, but um, because you've seen uh, almost yeah, all the, of them. Yeah, like the yeah. thing with Demolition Man, as much, as much as I love Demolition Man, it's like going from a movie where Stallone's basically a cartoon character to Rocky, where it's like he's a really serious film, you know, so. it's I think it's unanimous on this one. Dan List 1 is dead. Wow, we we all killed each other's first lists. Nice. The first No, list no, no, no. You list. killed your guys' first list. I did not kill your first list. I am Dan wants to be nowhere near d- getting rid of you got to fight. Yeah. <laughs> and now I don't even I don't even care where we're going now because we're not going where I want to go. So, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. Wait, I am home. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going to someone else's home. Okay, so round two, gentlemen. So this one, now we say what film we want to keep. Or no, what films um, we want to so get We're, we're still going to cut one. I think we're still on a cutting round, so we're cut. The next round of cuts, and then we go to our last ones, and then the final round of cuts, and then we vote for which one we want. This is the okay. very last one. We're down to two. Yeah. I would have to say out of these two lists, um, my favorite is the originals. Because I've only <laughs> seen two movies on that list. Maybe parts of Batman. But I love the concept of being able to go down to like a really old school Bob Hope film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be something really interesting for us to watch. You know, it's just like we're talking a really old film that we managed to fit inside of a destination, especially with the Manchurian Candidate and Ocean's Eleven. I haven't seen either of those, um, but I absolutely love the Ocean Eleven remake and I could not stand the Manchurian Candidate remake. Okay. So I, I like that one over the other one. But granted, I still think that all the franchise is still a solid list. If you guys ended up wanting that to keep that one and getting rid of the originals, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Hmm. I see why you would go with that. And I'm curious about Ghostbreakers, too. Don't get me wrong. And Manchurian Candidate. I've never seen either of those films. So that's yeah. that's tasty. My buddy Nick sold me on it. Like He was explaining a couple of scenes and how that they did certain things. And he's like, dude, it's an awesome film. You've got to get to that movie. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to work on a list with that one then. Honestly, I, I know you uh, joked and said that you kind of um, made this list with me in mind. But I really dig all the franchise. It's a really solid list for one. Stay Hungry. We haven't had a proper what's in the box film in a while and i think this one definitely fits it without being too terrifying and the fact that you haven't seen the exorcist hurts me josh (laughs) it hurts me because i was there when you didn't see it in theaters at the end of a horror movie marathon and i should have been a better friend and urged you on so personally i want you to keep 
uh, all the franchise. So that's the one I would like to see kept. And uh, so the um, your other list, I'd say we would snip out of there. Yeah. So you would vote for the originals to cut. Yes. Let's cut. I say cut the originals. Nigel? I don't care. We're not doing the you got to fight. I don't even <laughs> care what we're doing now. Well, then um, I will uh, speak no. for Dan. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm I'm flip-flopping here. I kind of like the originals more than all the franchise, only because uh, I would say th- two of those films, maybe even a case could be made for three, could be Destination films, especially The Exorcist. That's But that's my opinion. And also, I'm thinking of a skit with Batman the movie where we're hitting people. We can make the doink, doink, doink. <laughs> so. See, Dan knows how to get me too. He's just like he does make a good point. And we can, and we, and like you think about the skit, like you know, it's like you know, um, will our heroes uh, evade the death trap? Blah blah. blah you know, same bad yeah. time, same bad channel. So that's my case for the original. Ghostbreakers is starting to become my what's in the box film. Cause I'll be honest. The only Bob Hope movies I've seen are mostly the road Two movies. Like I haven't seen too many of his films outside of the road Two films. So yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm just kind of curious about it. I've also never, Oh wait. Yeah. I've seen the original Manchurian and oceans 11, but um, I love the original oceans 11. Love it. It's uh, my second favorite rat pack film. Robin and the Seven Hoods is actually my favorite. Really? I almost had that one on there too. I had a couple lists with that one. Yeah, on there Robin and the Seven Hoods is actually my favorite Rat Pack movie. But no fooling. Yeah, but that's that's my opinion. I would choose the originals if we were going to pick a Josh list this time. I I would choose the originals. So you're saying you would vote to cut all the franchise? I would vote to cut all the franchise. All right, so that's two for all the franchise. So the original stays. You do make a good argument for um all the franchise though, Tom. Well, oh yeah, I, yeah. The fact that he hasn't seen The Exorcist yet hurts me too. Like, I'm like never seen The Exorcist, and honestly, it's been a dog's age since I've seen Conan the Barbarian, um, and and Planet of the Apes, and I don't even know what Stay Hungry is. Yes, I guess Stay Hungry was the wee- low point on that list for me, not just ratings wise, but like I wanted to watch Airport because obviously it's got George Kennedy in it. Sure. Um, I still love him from Cool Hand Luke and Charlton Heston. I love Charlton Heston. And then, like, Planet of the Apes, Ugh, come on, classic right there. But oh. you guys are right. Exorcist and Planet of the Apes, those both could be destination films. Easy. But it's like I said, when we plan these, I try not to worry too much about destination films because we plan our destination films fairly far in advance. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. I, I expected that one to outlast um, the list, Josh. But, okay, so we're cutting all the franchise. Wow. Wow, I'm glad I didn't put money on that one. <laughs> Okay. Well, I even told you leaving out of the first round of cuts that all, the originals was my favorite. You did. You did mention that. Yes. Um, franchise was mine. I yeah. was. Right, well, I thought... Josh is. Josh has got a formula too. Josh almost always presents his favorite list as his third list. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sweet. Okay. I'm. I'm collecting myself. I'm going to say, of the lists I want to keep, and this is a hard one for me because when to lose and Cavalcade are really strong in different ways. I'm going to say I would like to keep Win to Lose just because Way of the Gun is a film I really love and I feel does not get as much credit as it deserves or love because the trailers were bullshit. And they lied. It's a lot like, um, you remember the early advertisements for um, the Ben Affleck film um, where he's trying to get people out of... Um, Argo. Argo. Yeah, Argo. And how they were like, kind of made it seem like it was going to be a comedy. Like, how are they going to get these out? We'll fake a comic book film. Hilarity. And then Affleck took one look at the people advertising his films. Like, that's cute. That's, let me see that stop that and then yeah. advertised it himself and won an academy award this film was what could have happened to argo um so i kind of want you guys to see it to get your input so i'm going to champion win to lose and um as hard as it is for me to say it 
um, the franchise, um, the cavalcade of cinema uh, is the one I would cut in this second round. So that's my opinion on that. Whoever wants to go next, what do you guys think? Um, again, don't care. You already eliminated the best one. So your <laughs> other two lists are shit. Uh, so I'm going to choose to eliminate both of them. I don't think you can do that quite <laughs> yet. <laughs> I would choose to eliminate Win to Lose. Cavalcade of Cinema Classics has more movies that appeal to me. I really want to see Heat. I've never seen that film. And when I saw it, it has like an almost a 9.0 on IMDb. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I really want to see Heat. The Untouchables is a great film. I'd love to watch it with you guys. Never seen Starman. Really want to see it. Never seen The Last Picture Show. But uh, while we were breaking, I, I Googled it and it looks interesting. Uh, again, in Taxi Driver is like a classic. I've never seen it. I've never seen Taxi Driver. Ooh. So, like, Taxi Driver really, really, really makes me go, oh, I really want to watch this. And I want to see it more than I want to see The Champ. You know, like, I have no desire to see The Champ. And Rollerball's just, both versions of that film are just a slog to get through. I just don't want to watch Rollerball. You've um, seen Roller, the original yes, Rollerball? Yes, I've seen both oh. versions of Rollerball. The remake is... Bad, bad, bad. But the first one's not very good either. There's a reason why James Caan's career didn't really take off after that film. Oh. Yeah, it's a slog to get through. Like, it's not as much of a slog as The Art of War was to get through. It's like one of those, it's like, this is going to be a really long watch, <laughs> you know? Um, and then we go from, like, Rollerball to Three Days of the Condor, which is I've not seen it, but the way you're talking about it, you're like, okay. And then The Champ okay um and then rocky is kind of a heavy film too and if i've learned my lesson when we go six weeks of heavy films <laughs> we come we come out ready to punch each other you know there is that there is something to be said you're not not wrong. not, not that... heavy heavy film heavy depressing films is what i should say heavy heavy depressing films although rocky's not too depressing but he doesn't win in the end spoiler alert yeah. but um <laughs> Yeah, Rocky II is the one where he wins. But for my personal tastes, I would rather go through Calvacade of Cinema Classics. I think all of those movies are really good films that are worthy of leading into Rocky. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. you know, and like you said, they're all really good movies, but not quite destination good movies. So I want to see every one of those films. And the only one I have seen on that list is The Untouchables and Rocky. All right. And um, yeah, just to not spoil it, but uh, yeah, you're not wrong about um, my second list. They are, I mean, mo- almost none of them uh, they are happy films. But Josh, your opinions? Well, um, for a further vote for your uh, cavalcade of cinema classics, um, Sean Connery is in The Untouchable. Which automatically elevates that list. <laughs> immediately because Sean Connery appears in a sketch again. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to have to side with Dan on cavalcade of cinema classics. Um, I did look up way of the gun. That does look interesting, but of the movies, I don't know the usual suspects of, I've always been curious about seeing that one. And then rollerball. I don't know. I, I, I sat through the shootist and true grit. I could probably make it through rollerball. I'm not saying we can't make it through it. I'm just saying it's a slog, dude. It's a. It's like, I don't mm-hmm. want to. Yeah, I know what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, the only movie on Tom's win to lose list that even remotely interests me is is Three Days of the Condor. It's just the only one that makes it like. I, Did you not? Do you not like The Usual Suspects? No, it's not one of my favorite films. It's one of those movies after I've seen it once, I have no desire to see it again. Uh, it's just my opinion. I mean, you know. It's just uh, my opinion. So I'm just. Yeah. I'm just, I haven't heard a lot of people talk negatively about the usual suspects. Oh, no, it's a good film. It's a very good film. Mm. Okay, I'm stepping out of this because, I, I mean. Well, you get, you you go, it's it's similar on mine. You know, one vote on each, and then uh, somebody comes in to be the tiebreaker, so to speak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean. You I, know, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go with Dan, and I, I say I, I would vote for Cavalcade of Cinema Classics and vote to cut when to lose. Okay. But absolutely pin three days of the condor for later, because I'd love to get to that film again someday. And I still want to really watch usual suspects. Oh, both of those films would pair very well with political thrillers, especially three days of the condor. So, uh, okay. So when to lose goes down. Okay. So we are now looking to slay 
one of Dan's babies, Nigel. Uh, if I have to pick uh, of my list to eliminate now, uh, I would pick One Man Can um, because going again, we're going to Rocky. I feel like Blow Your Top, especially the second half of that journey, is more worthy of going into Rocky. Like Ronin, then Heat, then Godfather 2. Those are really good movies. And mm. GoldenEye's a really good James Bond film. Um, Dante's Peak is, you know, that's our appetizer coming out of Terminator 2. And then we get into the more serious films after that. Sure, 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 sure. I see where you're going with there. Think of it like the drive-in. You guys remember the drive-ins back in the day? They'd show the kids movie, the action kids movie first. And then the second movie was like after the kids fell asleep in the car that the more adult film would start. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what this list is. Like it's the kids stuff or it's, it's the family stuff or the action heavy stuff. And then the second half is like the more serious dramas that are highly rated. And mm -hmm. another reason why I'm championing blow your top more is I really want to see heat. Okay. I see. I see your logic and all of those. Um, but, uh, what about you, Josh? Ah, uh, I'd have to agree. I think blow your top would be the better, uh, better of the two. And that like, so I would vote to cut one man can. I am torn. I mean, it's two to one anyways. Uh, but I don't know about Dante's peak. It's a good film. It's a good film. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not the greatest piece of cinema ever, but it's it's a lot of fun, and I think it's definitely better than Volcano. The fact that you're saying it's not Volcano level, at least Volcano was corny fun. Okay, no, no, I'm I'm getting flashbacks to it. No, it was a no, bad film. Yeah, it Volcano's a bad. really really bad film. Like, yeah, Tommy Lee but Jones is a phenomenal actor, and even he can't pull that one out of the fire. Hmm. yeah fire so <laughs> i was like i didn't mean to make a pun i didn't intend to make a pun but i'm like yeah yes yeah lean into it i'm gonna i know i'm, I'm not gonna sway the vote but honestly i would keep one man can because it is a solid list uh commando uh i've never seen the crow i haven't seen so long and ravenous and Coplander too that i've never seen whatsoever like whatsoever and i am curious to see fat rocky in copland um yeah. and i love count of monte cristo that was just one of those films i saw with you dan it's like this should be a cheesier worse film than it is but it's really good actually what's that the, what's that the count of monte cristo count of monte cristo yes cristo, it's a movie yes. that is way better than it has any right to be but still yes oh dude yeah agree that's like my favorite movie of all time <laughs> wow that is a bold claim, Josh, but I would I would say keep one man can and cut um, your third list. But um, sounds like we're cutting um, one man can and keeping. Uh, yeah. What was the name of your third list again? Uh, blow, 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 blow your, your top. Blow. Yeah, I, I really want to see Copland from one man can. But uh, if we went with well, now we've eliminated any list that has Stallone going into Rocky. So technically for selection section 12 i can save copland to get out of rocky there you go yeah. all right so out and down goes one man can did we just also eliminate our second list yeah we, we're going sequentially we, we kind of did we did <laughs> we're going well, this is this is getting weird <laughs> guys i'm scared i'm scared i need an adult <laughs> we are the adults oh no this is a little more predictable i think i'm going for the next round i'm going to have to put my worst list last and my best list first you did put your best list first <laughs> all right so we are on the final round of cutting mm -hmm. i think do we need so, to... yeah we need we need one last cut and then we're down to the top two okay this is going to be a really tricky one yeah because i hate the fact that i'm going to win because i'm just so amazing with my lists this is why we need uh our viewers to come up with good lists. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, maybe that, but maybe um, as a, um, for selection section, we bring in a fan to sit in. Maybe when it comes to the final round, they can help uh, whittle it down. That, Ooh, that would be an interesting idea. Yeah. Like we don't do any of the votes. We could champion our, our lists, mm -hmm. but they, we would bring in like three, um, three other people and they would be the ones who have to choose the list yeah the fun once we get down to the this final round where we each have one list a piece then say and now we turn it over to boppity boopity boop and that way we don't have to 
sacrifice our babies, they will sacrifice it for them. And then we know which ones to ban from Discord because they have <laughs> yeah, the wrong one. Yeah. You're not my friend anymore. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll kick them out at the, based on. But the other thing too is we could easily. Uh, I don't know if we'd ever do this, but a live stream our selection section episodes. Oh yeah, we maybe might have to do that someday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But until then, let us say the prayer. Oh gods of cinema, we promise that we will not hate the person that do not pick Tom's list, even though he has the best list. And he <laughs> Jesus should, it should be picked. Thankfully, some nice people were able were kind enough to give me some whiskey for my birthday, so I've got that ready to help with the burn. Okay. All right, so we've got to pick a uh, one of the lists to cut. <sighs> we each have a list left. We're at the top three. This is the final or the second, uh, the semifinals. Mm-hmm. We have the originals. We have the cavalcade of cinema classics, and we have blow your top. So I'm obviously going to stick with my list. I like my list. Um, like I love Last Action Hero, and uh, so I know that's a fun film to get started on going into this. Ghostbreakers and Manchurian Candidate are both what's in the box films for me. And then uh, Ghostbreakers is supposed to be a funny, a pretty funny movie. I like comedies. Uh, Manchurian Candidate may get a little bit more serious, but I think that this is just, I think it goes well because it's all, fran- like they're all originals slash franchise starters. Every one of these movies has effectively been remade. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could look at Rocky being remade into Creed, you know? I thought it was remade into that robot film with Hugh Jackman. That was too, yes. Yeah. I thought that honestly the Rock'em is. Yeah, re- robot? Yeah, 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 real, yeah, real Steel's one. plot is almost identical to Rocky's. Oh, yeah, it is. Like, almost exactly. Yeah. It's just Rocky with robots. Yeah, it's like beat for beat the same film. Yeah, but with Hugh Jackman. Um, Tom's Cavalcade of Cinema Classics, that's a contender as well i would have to say um i'm anxious to see heat and the untouchables starman i think i've started it but i've never gone more than five minutes into it never heard of last picture show and i know taxi driver is gonna be solid Mm -hmm. but at the same time i think those last three films or at least especially the last two are gonna be a little depressing in terms of depressedness (laughs) (laughs) that's a word that is a word um blow your top my biggest concern is godfather 2 i don't doubt that it's a good movie but i don't want to watch it until i've seen godfather dante's peak's a good movie not great but it's good i love goldeneye hell i want to do that one just for the skit all uh goldeneye 64 references <laughs> yeah, okay. all right who the fuck's using odd job slappers only but i'd say if i had to vote to kick one i'd have to say uh blow your top i love you dan it, don't hate me it's it's typical. <laughs> Said the guy who's who won the last two. <laughs> <laughs> typical. I knew you guys would just, you can't stand the fact that I've won two in a row. So it's like, we're just going to conspire and make sure Dan doesn't win no matter what. Wow. This is what it's like to talk to a Patriots fan, isn't it? I don't get that reference. <laughs> um. So it's my turn next. Um. I love you, Nigel, but I'm also going to have to say cut, blow your top. Wow, this is a goddamn conspiracy. We're not going with any list I want. The three I presented get eliminated, and then the one good list that, that I didn't present that Tom had it also got eliminated. You know what, guys? You two sort this out amongst yourselves. I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> you know, these, are sol- these are solid movies, Nigel. Ronan, I love. Uh, Godfather 2, I like Godfather 2. Uh, and I think with this list that you have here, it pairs well with everything else. Again, and it follows Heat, which a, a crime film with a crime film, it's a good choice. I've never seen Dante's Peak. I mean, I'm not going to quibble on the first film. A first film of a journey is a first film of a journey. It doesn't need to be, I, I don't know. It any- usually just uses a jump off to get us out of whatever film we watched as the destination. Yeah, we've had worse films than Dante's Peak. Yeah, we movie. had The Shootist, so yeah. Yes. Which, oh, yes. that was my list too. God damn, no one else <laughs> <laughs> But like I said, these are all solid uh, movies uh, on their own right. I know we will find a way to get to Ronan again. Um we're good. I mean, John, no, John Renault's not in that film, um, but it's... Um, there he is. John Renault's in Ronan, because one, right. one of my one of my lists, the, the list that I didn't use, but the list that had Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, I took John Renault out of uh, Ronan and moved him to Mission Impossible, and then took Ving Rhames out of Mission Impossible to uh, 
stop or my mom will shoot. So again, um, and of the films, really, Dante's Peak also kind of does stand out from all of them, um, just because Ronan Heat and Godfather Two are kind of crime thrillers or dramas. Dante's Peak is a volcano, and Rocky is a boxing film. So. Um, those three were there's but, going to be a... <laughs> but rocky starts the movie off as a he's a he's a collector for a loan shark guy yeah he's a mob enforcer yeah, uh, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta break your thumbs that's right i forgot about that yeah so okay so it does fit those three films in that regards uh but you've had a lot stronger lists in the past and you will have a lot stronger lists in the future but this one i'm sorry i hate to cut to kill your baby but um i would cut uh blow your top okay fine assholes <laughs> honestly i would cut that list too because i really want to do cavalcade cinema classics no seriously <laughs> i'm being dead serious if I, if I was to pick a list out of the three that are left i'm cutting mine because um i i, I really want to do cavalcade cinema classics but if that doesn't win and we end up going with the originals i'll like that too and i like them both better than my my, my list tom's right I presented better lists before, and I will probably uh, be back on my A game when we get out of Rocky here in six weeks. And I also agree with Josh. Uh, Godfather 2 is a classic film, but you probably shouldn't watch it until you've seen The Godfather. So you're right. right let us salute. Blow your top. You have been blown away from the top. Gross. Save me, <laughs> so Josh. All right, so now we are on to the final round, um, and we are going to be voting on the net. Vote. And I'm not going to participate anymore because these two conspiratorial assholes are dicks. So I'm I'm going to play my game, and I'm just kind of checked out at the moment. Okay, rock paper scissors. Okay. I win! Oh, look at that! <laughs> oh, I got the winning one. Okay, oh, I accidentally deleted your list. We lost it. Sorry. I guess we'll go with my list. I made copies. Actually, we deleted. We actually lost all the lists. So now we're going with the one that has stop or my mom will shoot on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's the only one that made it out of the fire. All right. We ready to rock? Yep. Yep. I'm ready to lose a friend. Mm. <laughs> But which one is the question? Intense music you know, right that, here. That's a stronger relationship. You know, Tom will bounce back. I won't. I'm older than Josh, so my health is frail. I may not get another one of these, Dan. Oh, no. Oh. But he'll forget about it because he's both over 40. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Stop it. Stop. If you guys don't stop, I'm going to go with the list with stop or my mom will shoot. <laughs> <laughs> he'll do it, too. Yes, he will. <laughs> Uh, but since all of my lists have been eliminated and now I have to figure out which friend doesn't want to talk to me until we record again next week. Uh, um, I like both of these lists a lot. I know, right? They're, they're both pretty like, good in different ways. But gun to my head, I got to go with Cavalcade of Cinema Classics only because I want to see Heat so bad. Like, I just I want to see Heat so bad. That's yeah, it's just it's the only thing that's like I really want to see Heat. You know? that's that's fair that's fair it's which I means mean, i'm probably going to end up hating that film because every time i do that to myself i'm like i watch it i'm like God damn it. i i mean the first half of like batman uh the dark knight i mean that whole bank heist scene basically from everything everyone told me is basically heat with you know the joker that's why i said they, they drew, drew inspiration from it but if i gotta advocate mine at all you know because we've got what two movies from the 80s in that one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I know we'd get to heat. We definitely would be getting to heat. It's got too many people in it to mm-hmm. not yeah, to not have. The Untouchables, that's just like the 1920s crime one, right? Yeah, but No, yeah, the, yeah, it's the 30s. It takes place in the 30s. Yeah, 30 whatever. It's, it's a like Al Capone movie with prohibition and all that stuff. And Sean Connery. Yes. But uh, I, I still have to advocate my uh, originals list just because it's like these are like the beginnings and the original starts. Mm-hmm. And there's no 80s movies in mine. And that's like, as much as I love the 80s, mm-hmm. I hate, I feel dirty just saying that out loud. It's like, we've had so many lists lately that have been all in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And I think that we need to step out of the 80s for a little bit. And you guys are always saying, you know, we need to go hit some more classic films. Mm-hmm. I'm getting to the point where I would like to see some more classic films. I meet me, this guy. <laughs> Which is a big reason I went with older films in this uh, in my lists. And no, I, and, that's why I love this last list. When you threw out 
I keep wanting to call it Ghostbusters, but it's Ghost Breakers. <laughs> uh, it's like, wow, I've, I have never heard of that film. If we wound up going with it, I don't think I'd be hurting so much. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm not going to be upset if this is the list we go with, because Ghostbreakers is definitely a what's in the box film for me, you know. Yeah, and I think watching a really classic Bob Hope film yeah. is, would be... It would be interesting. It'd be interesting to watch together, too. Sure, sure. And again, this is why I feel dirty always voting. Well, I don't always vote for my list, but I do feel dirty when I do vote for my own list because I see the points you all make in yours. And again, I really like your list and throwing Batman 66 out of nowhere. This is a very good, clever list, Josh. And... I feel really bad about you put yourself out there. It's like, oh, that's adorable. Smack. Right on the fridge. We're going right, to put right on yeah, the fridge. Right there. Right on the fridge. <laughs> right on the fridge. Right there. In terms of your critiques, you're not wrong. We have been in the 80s for a while. Starman and Untouchables are 80s films, but thankfully, Heat is 95, Last Picture Show is 71, Taxi Driver is 76, and we go, we take Heat, which is essentially Dark Knight without Joker, to Taxi Driver, which is the Joker without Joker. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I didn't even think about that. That, that, that Joker borrowed heavily from Taxi Driver as well. No, and I and I understand totally. We do spend a lot of time in the '80s, and we do. But honestly, none of these films are "quote unquote" typical '80s films. They're not the the Aliens and the Arnold's movies and the. Um, uh, they're definitely not the box office smash movies. Yeah, they're not the yeah they're not the yeah they're not those those popcorn '80s flicks that we've watched so many of. Like you know, it's not like mm-hmm. Tom's li- Tom's list is full of like a bunch of Ferris Bueller Day Off or something like that. <laughs> Guys, just oh, I, start presenting shit lists, okay? So it's easier for me to pick. <laughs> I did present a shit list. You really liked it. I know, and you, no one picked it. <laughs> and like I said, if you picked went with your list, that's no sweat off my sack. I think that's going to be a great list regardless. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, I mean, that's... Yeah, I don't think that that's going to be a bad list either. You got some heavy hitters in that one. Mm -hmm. Some movies that I'm excited to see. I don't think I've seen any movies on that list except for Rocky. So, with the in mine, I've only seen Last Action Hero and Rocky. Yeah, Tom's Cavalcade of Cinema Classics. I have seen exactly none of those films except for Rocky. Or wait, I've seen Untouchables. I'm sorry. I've seen Untouchables and I've seen Rocky. But I've never seen Heat, never seen Starman, never seen Last Picture Show. Hell, I've never even heard of Last Picture Show until Tom said, presented it. And Taxi Driver is one of those movies that um, it's a classic that I've never gotten around to seeing. And plus, we get Bridges, Burgess Meredith out of Rocky. They're still Batman 66 as a possibility. Just saying as a, as a way out. But well, that's the one movie that I don't care if we don't get to. <laughs> <laughs> like i said i had an alt list where instead of batman i had the godfather but you yeah. guys are right that's that's destination film work. godfather's absolutely destination movie material i mean not that i didn't enjoy that film and i really do think it's a good movie but if we made it chapter one a destination film but didn't make the godfather a destination film uh there's something wrong with us yeah. Yes, you are. We would not be able to call ourselves a movie podcast. Yeah. We would have to turn yeah. in our badges. Yeah, not that I didn't think the field trip to Kingtown wasn't one of the best ones we ever did. And it chapter one, I immensely enjoyed that film. But uh, it, it, of course, we were still young podcasts. And I mean, look at all the films we've had we after were, that. We were young whippersnappers back then. We were. Yes, we were so green. But I'm sorry, Josh. I'm so sorry. But I have to cast a vote for myself cavalcade of cinema classics it's okay it's okay i hate both of you god damn it <laughs> good thing i got his birthday gift just a couple days ago <laughs> you can't give it back now it's okay it's okay i'm not mad i'm not i don't have i'm not harboring any resentment that just means that uh, the next list is mine and it will have stop or my mom will shoot i hope it does because i really wanted to do that mo- that episode <laughs> Come on, guys. I know the movie's like shit, but like that episode would have been great. Oh, no, I want to watch that on this podcast. Like, you guys see these really bad films, and with very rare, rare exception, like we have some bad films, um, but I want to see some of these bad films. Like, I would love to watch Double Dragon. I would love mm-hmm. to watch the original Super Mario Brothers. Oh, yeah. Um, like, 
stop her, my mom will shoot. And um, I would love to get to Street Fighter someday because I just want to see Raul Julia had, with stomach cancer g- giving the performance of his life because he wanted to make a movie his grandkids could see. Put a pin in that in, in, if if ever we find time or a way to get to... But I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I just I feel bad because Josh actually hasn't won in a while. And, I know. And like I, I actually this kind of feels like Rocky. He went the distance, but he's just I he just doesn't have enough to just knock him out. This for me, this is a reverse of when we were doing Empire. Tom mm-hmm. had this amazing list, and then all of a sudden Josh comes up with one that's like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, yeah. and Tom hadn't won in a while. And I'm like, I should be voting for Tom. I should really be voting for Tom. But uh <sighs> really want to see slipstream but at the same time i don't want to see slipstream but i gotta see what's in slipstream but you gotta admit we were all better off for watching slipstream because that was a brilliant what's in the box film it was it was yes you know what there is a way we can have our cake and eat it too i just found out a way that we can do heat the untouchables and then still get to stop or my mom will shoot I just think you take Robert De Niro from the untouchables. Oh wait, no, you can't do that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tempting is an audible list. <laughs> no, I know it's a whole nother list. It's not just an audible. Uh so wow, oh my god. I... Honestly, you should feel bad that you're winning without winning, you gotta fight. <laughs> like this should feel like a consolation prize. Like you won, but like barely. You know what? I'm just going to embrace my Apollo Creed. I'm taking the W. No rematches until the sequel. (laughs) So, God, I wasn't expecting to win. So Cavalcade of Cinema Classics wins. So what do we want to call this journey? Um, I'm going to call it Not You Gotta Fight. Josh? Well, I was totally thinking I was going to win again. (laughs) Uh, I had a fun one I was working on that was basically um, the word fucked scrambled up. Oh, damn it, I I feel bad again. (laughs) We could be watching the fuck journey. So I think um, Fire Pit Goes to Distance might be a little too on the nose. Yeah, and I I was trying to get away with the whole Fire Pit at the beginning. Yeah, that was the first half of this journey. But I like like the, um, because we had some creative names before, like Field Trip to Kingtown. This last one was really good, Vacation Determination. Oh, Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <sighs> something with training. I don't know. No. What do they call like uh like fight championships? Is there a name for those at all? Fight championships, like they're called. Yeah. They're usually title matches or title fights or um um not a road trip. We've done a road trip. We've done a parade. Uh, the thieving and beating showdown to the champion or something like that. Beating it out of our systems. The thieving and beating. Uh, road to the showdown or something. Busting knuckles? No. I honestly don't. Why is it that my list always we have the hardest time thinking of names? No, we had this fire pit strikes out like right there, and the sink or swim summer tour was this one that I came up with off the wall, and we're like, we're going with that one. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I, I like doing like the thieving and beaten, or the fighting and trying, or something. You know, something and something, something somewhere. <laughs> like they even had beaten Road to the Champions or something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, used... I don't. I, I. You gotta keep in mind, sports stuff is not my forte. Well, these are all classic films, so um, I think we're. That's why I'm trying to go with Thieven because they're thieves. Taxi driver is like he's. I don't know. He's he's not a thief in that one. Stealing the gold, stealing the lead. No, because uh, you got to do a. Uh, you got to describe a journey. Okay. Like the sink or swim summer tour, field trip to Kingtown. Field trip is the name is the uh, name of the journey. Mm-hmm. Punxsutawney or the parade to Punxsutawney. You know, it's a adverb to get to somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. no. is it or is it still taboo to say the march to the champions or something like that? No, no, th- that whole thing's done now. Yeah, so like, mm, I know this is the last one was pretty easy to come up with. This one. Hold on, I'm trying to think. I'm, trying, I'm honestly... Um... But yeah, this isn't really a sports-related journey. That's why I say thieving and beaten. I don't know why I keep going on to that one. But like, you know, criminals mm-hmm. and punching, and it fits well with Rocky. Um, we just need like an adjective to somewhere. 
Um, hmm. It's like March. Is there be March. Is there a song title we could go with? I don't know that much music. Hmm. We might be overthinking it. The March to Pound Town. <laughs> March to Pound Town. <laughs> <laughs> I, do like that I think one. March to Pound Town is like just whimsical enough. I mean, we don't need a serious name. No, you don't. You don't. And like, because like we went to Jaws and our name was a Sink or Swim Summer Tour. Right. Honestly, March to Pound Town is pretty good. Like, I, that is pretty I, good. Like the March to Pound Town, that is pretty good. I would, I would choose a different um, verb uh, other than March, but I like the destination being Pound Town. <laughs> it's and it does fit us. Ooh, the mar- the, mar- the, the, mar- the marathon to Pound Town. There you go, boom. Marathon to Pound Town. Okay, yeah. okay. Join, join the fire pit on our marathon yeah. to Pound Town. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also, like Heat and Starman and Ta- like those are they're not super long films, but they're longer movies than what we normally watch. They're not like 90 minute films. So they're longer films. So therefore they're marathons. So the marathon to pound town. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going the distance. So yeah. that, that still fits that whole theme of going the distance. We'll go the distance with the fire pit on our marathon to pound town. Yeah. Get ready for a lot of uh, unsolicited sex jokes. Well, you know what? I didn't. I, okay, I didn't pick your list, and I feel awful about that. So you can have all of the unsolicited sex jokes you want in this journey, and I will not call you out on them until we get to at least last picture show. <laughs> I can I have a vote in this one? Cause no, no you, you got your list picked. You get no more votes for anything. Yeah, I think I have yet to be... Uh, so I, I got at least this feather in my cap. I have yet to not have a list that made it to the finals. Yeah, you've been a finalist every single journey. It's always either yeah, down yeah. to you yeah. and me or you and Tom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Well, that's at least a feather in my cap that I've got. Yeah. But I've, I'm a little Leonardo DiCaprio in that regard. <laughs> but then Leonardo DiCaprio did get it eventually. He only had... He the, did, he did. He had to freeze to death and eat raw fish, but he made it. And you can stick this feather in your cap too. You have yet to give us an art of war or the greatest. I did. Or, I had to... or the shootest. All right. So how do we want to do uh, the? Oh, because Tom, you got the hype section. So that means me and Dan are going to have to record the um, second hype. So you got to do the uh, running the the name the movies. Okay. 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 So we're doing so this. So how do we want to do this? Do we want to do it? We we've done the adventure like laying the map on the ground and going. We're going from here to here to here. Mm-hmm. Um. We want to read this like a heist, or do we want to read this like a, or oh, or better yet, we got to read this like a um man. You gotta you gotta be a contender. You gotta you gotta take out Xander Berkeley and Heat, and then you're gonna have to take on Robert De Niro and the Untouchables. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cause I don't I don't want to do another intense one because I've done two intense. Yeah. Um, you can also do a, you can also do like a boxing pre match like and in this corner. Oh, that's a good one too. Mm-hmm, that's a good mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. It's either, it's like so yeah th- that's a good one is Dan's idea of doing um the boxing announcer or like I said mine's basically um god damn it what was Polly is that no that's not, that's the brother's name um it's Mickey Mick Mick yeah you you could do Mick um to be for Rocky's sake mm-hmm. or the boxing one either one of those work great mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um um hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think. I think the Mickey one might go better because, and then this corner weighing whatever to whatever heat, and then in this corner, so it's this ring have six corners. Yes. So I think the, the Mickey one. Wait. Okay. <laughs> the octagon has eight. But then we're missing two other people. No, that's the hexagon. That's um. I don't know. Matt. No, I actually like the idea of it of someone explaining what the fight bracket's going to be. So first, you're going to have to deal with Robert De Niro and the Untouchables, or whatever you know. Sure, sure, sure. So it's like, hang in there, kid. You're almost there, so I don't want to see you give up yet. I know Xander Berkeley and Heat is looking scary, but I want to see you tear right through him on your way to Robert De Niro in The Untouchables. I want to see you get mean against Charles Martin Smith in Starman. Otherwise, you'll never make it past Jeff Bridges in The Last Picture Show. But... If you got the guts to take on Sybil Shepherd in Taxi Driver, then I know you got the heart to go one on one with Joe Spinell in Rocky. Now get in there! 
Step into the squared circle every Tuesday at firepitpodcast.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh start on their marathon to pound town. Taking on all the heavy hitters, going the distance against the heavyweight champion of boxing films, Rocky. Rocky. It's hope. It's heartbreak. It's haymakers. And it's here here at the fire pit. You're a wrecking machine. Yeah, that was that good. Was that was actually great. really good. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that Sweet. was actually really good. I think you got it on the first take. Yeah, same here. Good, because my voice can't do that twice. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is awesome. This is very awesome. I need water now. It is really hard to do a, that voice. I don't know <laughs> how you two do that. Mm. All right, nicely done, nicely done, and that's tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine contender podcasts are sold. Our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m., and yes, I will be getting back on schedule. Um, My apologies for all our listeners. Your editor has been busy. Please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it as it helps us out. And be sure to also tell some of your friends and family about the podcast and tell them to review our podcast. Give us a a five star, a six smiley face, a seven thumbs up, whatever they use on that platform to say this is a great podcast you should listen to it it really helps us out and really helps our podcast grow and be sure to join our discord channel as well link in the episode's description on discord.me slash forward slash fire pit uh, you'll get notifications of new episodes and even better you can engage in discussions with other fans of the show uh, uh hop on in it's a really fun time and you can even email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, just like that guy at the interspersal says. Or uh, if you want to check out our new website at firepitpodcast.com, you can always hit us up there too. So we're always looking for uh, communication with our fans. If you want to hit us up on Facebook, we got one of those. And Twitter, at firepitcce. It's slowly growing. We've got more and more uh, followers every day, and we always we appreciate anybody who's willing to follow. And uh, we are going to hopefully start with this journey, fan reactions and or expectations. So now that you know all the movies on our list, if you want to go ahead and uh, send your expectations in, just send us in a uh, short soundbite, no more like maybe five, ten seconds, a couple sentences about what you, uh, you're you expecting or if a movie you've seen on here and you have your own final thoughts about it. We'd love to hear it. and We'll even play it on the podcast if you... Uh, submitted to us yeah we're looking forward to trying that out feel free to get us to contact us on any one of our, our uh where we do it so email you can just shoot us a private message on discord whatever we'll uh, listen to it we may even comment on the podcast if you send it in we will definitely be commenting on the podcast yeah, for oh sure. yes yes but i want to shout out some people first off i would like to shout out everyone who helped make this past weekend very fantastic It was my birthday, and I, without going into too many details, um, my two co-hosts and friends conspired to make sure it was one of the best birthdays I've ever had. Um, I was not aware that I was going into a birthday party. I thought I was going into my mother's retirement party. It was a legitimate surprise, and I hate you both for doing that, you jerks. How, you know, how dare you give me a fantastic birthday? Uh, No, uh, you both have given me a fantastic birthday, and I could not appreciate you more for it. And I would also like to shout out Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer is a friend of mine, also uh, my friend Ben's girlfriend. I'm shouting her out because at a uh, shindig a while back, when I told her what was going on with our destination and our journey, she was like, oh, I can think of a list. And on the spot came up with one. And um, I'm going to get rattle it off real quick. Her list, which I'm calling the Disqualifier, would have taken Schwarzenegger to Kindergarten Cop, and from there, Joan Cusack to Adam's Family Values, Christina Ricci to Casper, Bill Pullman to While You Were Sleeping, 
Sandra Bullock to Demolition Man, and then Sylvester Stallone to Rocky, which was an amazing list for her to come up with. But I have seen every film on that list, so unfortunately, I could not use it. Sorry, Jennifer. It was excellent, but it was a disqualifier. So thank you, everyone, from this past weekend, and thank you, Jennifer, for your recommendation. And finally, real quick, uh, Audacity editing software. We don't pay for it. They don't pay us to say anything good about it. But I've gone on long enough. Use it if you want to. And uh, I would like to shout out uh, my buddy Nick. I tried to get the Manchurian candidate. You sold me on it. But uh, alas. But still, thank you for that recommendation. His friends are dicks. Just say it, Josh. Just say it. (laughs) I wasn't going to. Yeah, but you were thinking it. We know you were thinking it. I'm um, thinking it. But Thank you for uh, selling that movie to me. I've definitely got to watch it now. So uh, I appreciate your interest in the uh, podcast and uh, brainstorming with me on ideas when we was coming up with that last month. And uh, lastly, Danielle, I know I got to shout you out. You really, really wanted to watch Double Dragon. We will get to it someday, I promise. No, we won't. And uh, uh, lastly, just uh, I'd like to shout out Sync Lounge and Plex. We didn't use them tonight, but they are the software that we use in order to watch our movies so we can be geographically separated, but uh, f- mentally together. I don't know where I was going with that, Dan. <laughs> yes. Excellent segue. <laughs> uh, I would like to shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. And uh, again, thanks for all your continued support and listening. Uh, special shout out to um, Josh for thinking we're dicks. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, special shout out to all of you out there, actually. Uh, we just wrapped up our 11th selection section episode. Like, And these are usually our most popular episodes. Like, they really like them. So um, thanks for listening. I mean, I just, I'm still in awe that we've, we're on 11, you know, of these. And six weeks from now, we'll be doing number 12. That's still kind of surreal to me. So, um, yeah, special shout out to all of you out there that listen to us. Um, It's just been great. And also a special shout out to Zencaster, because the reason why we use Zencaster is because Skype lost the greatest selection section episode of all time, selection section six. And ever since then, we've been using we love that software because it technical difficulties don't seem to phase it. And yet Skype can't hang on to a regular 90 minute recording <laughs> shout out to zencaster yeah because in uh six weeks we'll be doing selection section 12 which will be six selection sections since uh skype lost the greatest selection section of all time again it's just surreal that we just wrapped up our 11th selection section episode it really does feel like yesterday we were recording for five and a half hours trying to figure out how to get to independence day from top gun because that was before we had the rule of only three lists a person and only this like we all had like 17 lists yeah that was a funny one too because we're all like all right let's all do two lists tom came with one and then he <laughs> fucked that up <laughs> <laughs> But we'll discuss more of that when we get to the end of the year. Yep. But yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. enough with that, enough with the retrospective midway through it. We can't get yeah, we can't get, we can't get too, too nostalgic. We got we are because you know, guys, you know what? It's it's about to get hot in here. Should I take off all my clothes? No. Yes, I'm naked. What are you guys doing? Gross. Now I'm putting my clothes back on. We are going to heat next week. We're going into heat, so we're going to be doing some pounding. <laughs> Marathon to Pound Town starts with heat. I cannot believe you guys agreed to that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, I've been Tom. I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. <laughs>